Okay, let's get rolling here. So thank you everybody for coming to check out the, the Fun and Easy Guide to Editing in Apple Photos. I've been giving talks about Apple Photos for a long, long time, uh, all the way back to my uh, genius days at Apple and before. And one of the topics that comes up all the time is editing, how to, how to use photos to, uh, to make your photos look, how to use Apple photos to make your photos look better uh, or to alter them, do, do whatever you want, take some creative license. And the way that photos is designed, it's, it's not necessarily obvious to people how they do it. And certainly the extent that you can go to, to do amazing things right within Apple Photos. So um, I, uh, I think that at the very least, it's an awesome starting place to teach you uh, how to, you know, the things that you can play with and how you can use them in order to get pictures that you are really, really excited about. So let's uh, start down this road here. Uh, here, a little housekeeping. We're going to take about 45 minutes to do this and leave time for some questions at the end. So um, make notes uh, if you want to. Uh, there should be some time and we'll, we'll work it out. If, if we run a little bit over, we'll see how people want to go. Or, of course, you can always email me and I'm happy to follow up on details that um, may not have... have uh, been fully formed. So um, first we're going to talk a little bit about what editing does for us. What, what is editing? Not everybody really understands what that means, but they know that they can do stuff with their photos. And it's not just random stuff. Um, there are good reasons for why we edit and the effect of our edits and so forth. So we're gonna go through that a little bit so you get a sense of what, what the purpose is and how you can use it. In photos uh, on both the, the iPhone and the Mac, uh, there's basically three core editing modes, uh, cropping the photos, making adjustments, color adjustments, and using filters, which is kind of a hybrid of uh, of the um, adjustment, uh, a compilation of adjustments. We'll see how those uh, fit together and what you have access to right within photos. We'll take a look at these editing tools that, that make up the tools you have to work with. And I am going to point out uh, where some of the differences are on the iPhone or on the Mac uh, because the, uh, the advantage of this Apple system is that uh, you can transfer what you learn on the phone to the Mac and vice versa. Um, certainly, you, if, you're, if you don't have a Mac, if you're a iPhone user and you have a Windows machine, um, the, the principles of what we do here translate just as well to other uh, photo applications as well. But uh, we are going to uh, talk a little bit about this, this Apple ecosystem and how it all works uh, to your advantage. And uh, just so that you know, we are going to be recording this. It is being recorded as we speak. Uh, I will get it up uh, for you to replay uh, at your convenience uh, in the next couple of days. So uh, my suggestion uh, to everybody is to... Um, uh, follow along if you can. If you're looking on your computer, uh, then uh, follow along on your iPhone. See if you can uh, find some of these tools as we go along because it's, it's pretty interesting to see it uh, sort of evolve in real time. I'm just going to take a short uh, drink of water here. Hang on. <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about why we edit. What is this whole editing thing about? So the first part of it that we're gonna talk about is cropping. Cropping is primarily for composition. There's, there's other reasons for it, but um, composing is how we, uh, how we show what we're doing. 
and uh, it it is our our little view onto whatever whatever we've chosen to photograph. So we'll talk first about cropping. Then we have the adjustments, and the adjustments are are primarily what we do for uh, impact. And um, we may need to adju adjust exposure. We may want to add detail in various ways. So uh, we have multiple adjustments we're going to be working with. And um, this is, is really the look and feel of what we create in our photos. And then we're going to talk about filters, which are filters have become a huge, uh, hugely popular uh, tool for uh, photographers. Uh, filters are essentially presets of multiple adjustments that we can just take and apply very simply and come up with a, a certain look that we really love. So we'll take a look at the filters that are in Apple Photos and, and talk a little bit more about that. Now, in a, in a broader sense, we edit for three or four core reasons. Uh, the first thing is that we may want the picture that we're creating to be faithful to what we saw. And the reason we have to do that is because the camera sees things differently than our eyes do. Uh, it responds differently to uh, different colors. Uh, certain colors are very hard to reproduce. Other colors are easier to reproduce. And uh, the, the chips, the, the camera manufacturers all have little biases as to which colors reproduce really well and, and uh, which don't for certain types of colors or um, bright sunlight or low light. Um, in the uh, old days, pre-digital, uh, photographers would choose uh, different films based on the characteristics of the film. Uh, what they reproduced well. Well, chips are not that different, and the chips have gotten better and better. The the color that they reproduce when they when you take a picture has gotten better and better. The iPhone is is actually an amazing little camera. It's it's so far superior to to the early digital uh, cameras, the full size cameras that it's it's scary and you know makes you wonder how far we're going to go with it. But that is one of the main reasons that we got into editing in the first place was to, to try and, and reproduce what we saw when we were out taking the picture. Now, the flip side of that is we may want to manipulate that reality and create an effect. We may, you know, we, the, the human eye, uh, you know, in our imagination always wants something a little better or a little different than, than what is in front of us. And so we have the opportunity to emphasize certain colors for effect or uh, increase contrast or adjust the exposure. So something may be you know, darker uh, and, and more dramatic or, or very light and airy. So these are, this is the creative part of, of this whole uh, road. And um, we may want to create an alternate reality altogether. I think one of the kind of amusing things when digital photography was developed enough that people, um, pun intended, uh, was developed enough that uh, uh, developers started making uh, filters uh, that were kind of retro filters. You know, they would make a filter that it looked like scratched film or looked like old Polaroids or looked like all these things that back in the day we were trying to avoid and now people are trying to recreate. So uh, these edits allow us to, to apply these effects in ways that add a certain character to, uh, to an image. And so we can play on that as well. Now, one of the things that is really cool about the iPhone and about the uh, and the Mac and the this Apple universe that we're going to be talking about is that Apple was the the first company to really develop what's called non-destructive editing 
And what non-destructive editing means is that when you take a picture or when you introduce a picture into Apple Photos, that original image that you imported or took is never touched. So it gives you this, this great safety net to play around with all of these edits that we're gonna be working with. And if at some point you decide, nah, <laughs> I just don't want this. It's, uh, you know, it's not what I was expecting. I wanna go back to square one. You can indeed go back to square one. And this makes uh, the iPhone and, and the, the Apple Photos software a really, really great tool, both to experiment and to learn and to create with, because you can essentially push it as far as you want to without worrying that you're going to uh, damage the original image, which used to be the case um, back in the, when digital first came out, we were always worried about saving that very first original someplace where it wouldn't get accidentally uh, cropped smaller or degraded uh, by too many edits or something like that. Uh, we can also make multiple versions and uh, we can simply duplicate an image, make multiples and look at them side by side. And because of how Apple Photos is designed, we're not actually duplicating, we're not actually making a second or third or fourth uh, file in the software. All we're doing is creating a virtual copy, which adds very little actual um, uh, file size to the, to the database. So we're not, we're not limited by how much space we have. We could make 20 different versions of a photo and we would still be just fine. We would not have added a lot of, of space overhead to our devices. So that's really, really helpful. And again, we can always go back to that original file. That's, that's sort of our, our fallback position. So with that all in mind, let's take a tour and uh, go, through this, go through the editing uh, techniques that we have. Again, if you have uh, a device available that you, can, uh, that you can look at some of these as we go, that's awesome. If not, when we get around to, uh, when you get around to watching the replay, you can go through this yourself as well. So the first thing that we have to figure out is how do we get into the editing? And um, it actually is, is not quite as obvious as, uh, as one would think. Uh, but it's there, and when you uh, open up a photo to its largest size, so you're, you're scan skimming through your photos or whatever, you'll see that there is the edit button in the upper right hand corner of either the iPhone or the Mac uh, interface. And that's it. You basically uh, click on that and it takes you into the editing suite which looks like this. And so what you'll have are uh, all the tools that we're working with. On the iPhone, you'll have tabs, or, or three key tabs across the bottom. They're down here. And on the uh, Mac, they're uh, on the top with a, a film strip along the bottom. So uh, we have adjust, filters and crop side by side. And those are the ones that we're gonna be going through today. We're first gonna talk about cropping because cropping is, is sort of the, the main way that we show what we want to show, our, uh, show the universe. We're, essentially we're saying, you know, I was out here in this time and place of all the stuff I could have photographed, this is, this is what I photographed. And I wanna show you something cool about it. So what we have is um, the, uh, a tab uh, at the top for cropping. And in, on the iPhone, 
there is actually a second tab that pops up here uh, that we would touch and it brings up the formats. The same thing is true on the, um, on the Mac, uh, but when you open up into the, the crop tool, hit the crop tab, you get these formats along the side. So now when we talk about formats, what is that? It's really just the, the, the square, the rectangle that the camera is designed to capture and we use to, to frame our pictures. When, oh, hang on, there we go. Um, in this case, we have the main photo here in the screen. So this is the full image that I took when I was down at the beach and, and caught this scene. Now, what will happen is I may want to share that in different ways. Um, I may want to uh, do it square if it's going to Instagram, for instance. It will probably show up as a square. If I'm going to present it as a, um, a slideshow on a high def TV, uh, 16 by nine is, is the format uh, that the, the shape that uh, that screen uh, is designed for. And if I'm going to order a print, a commercial print uh, that I'm going to put in a frame, five by seven inches is a standard size. So even though we're starting with this full image, um, if we go to these different sizes, we have to make a decision as to what part of this image we want to include when we crop it, because something is gonna get cropped out. If it goes square, you're gonna get the sides cropped off. Uh, if it goes to a 16 by nine, you're gonna get top and bottom cropped off. And uh, this five by seven is, uh, is a little different. It's a little, uh, you lose a little bit top and bottom. Uh, from what you get from the from the camera capture. So when that happens, we want to control what we're leaving in the picture, where that horizon line falls. And so these are the reasons we want to pay attention to cropping and that we have these uh, sizes in here that we can uh, use to uh, guide our, our, uh, our crops as we go. Now, we have uh, one other thing, other than the cropping, we have a, uh, a tool on the iPhone that I'm gonna throw out here for all the real estate or interior people in the crowd. Uh, there is a tool to rotate, straighten, and, and adjust the skew on these uh, photos. Um, if you've ever taken pictures of houses from the street, from street level, you notice that there's that tendency for the, in the picture that it looks like the building is sort of tipping back on itself. It's kind of like leaning away or, or leaning forward. Um, this is actually kind of a cool thing and uh, it's not available actually on the, on the Mac uh, side, but on the phone, you can do this. And so if you're, if you're out taking pictures of buildings or uh, room interiors, um, it gives you something that you can kind of play with. And it's great to show people at parties because like nobody knows it's there. So um, anyway, that is, a, that is an extra little thing in cropping. Now, we talked about cropping for, for, for formats based on what we're delivering it to. But let's talk for just a minute about cropping as a design, and a design tool, a creative tool. And here's an example of a shot that I did that I think illustrates it really well. When I took this shot at the beach, uh, I, I took the shot on the left, which is, was about as close as I could get to this, this boy. Uh, I, was, I was afraid of disturbing him and that he would stop looking at the water and turn around because I just thought it was a really cool shot. It was a, it was just a, a great summer day 
uh, summer evening, and it was just sort of the essence to me of, of kids in summer. But I really wanted, I, I was curious what it would be like a little closer up, and so I made the second version on the right uh, where I cropped in a little bit uh, from the first picture. So these are the same shot, just cropped in slightly. Now, when I look at these, this is a case where the picture on the left, which encompasses everything, to me is a scene. I, I look at it as, as almost a landscape and it's kind of a whole experience and it's a summer thing and there's, you know, the, the light on the horizon and so forth. And that is how I look at it. Yet when I crop in just a little bit on this picture, now to me it becomes a picture about the, the boy and about the kids because now they're, now they're large enough that you can see them a little bit. And so out of this one shot, I really got what are to me two distinctly different pictures that, that offer a different perspective into what was happening right at that time. So this is, this is the power of cropping and how you can use it to, um, to affect uh, with nothing more than just the cropping, you can change the look and feel of a picture. So now let's look at adjustments. So we, we've talked about the, the form, which is, which is kind of the staging of your picture. Now let's look at some of the details. So the adjustments, which are what most people think of when they talk about editing, are in uh, similar places, again, on the, on the two platforms. So on your iPhone, uh, you're going to see the, uh, these buttons along the bottom. And you're going to see them in a side panel on the, uh, on the Mac. Uh, there's obviously more room on the Mac so they can spread things out. And we'll, we'll show you what the differences are with that. Uh, you get to this simply by touching the uh, adjustment button on the iPhone or the adjustment tab on the, uh, on the Mac. Well, using the, uh, using the Mac here, uh, we'll talk about some of the things that you can do. So exposure is like the big thing. You know, we, I think the first thing we all go to is, is making sure the exposure looks right for whatever that is. Uh, we can decide here if these adjustments are, again, going to be treating uh, this as a faithful scene or uh, whether we want to exaggerate the scene. Maybe we want to add more contrast or uh, different lighting. Uh, we may want to uh, exaggerate the sharpness, the detail. Uh, we can bring out things like the, the detail in the waves here or the detail in the rocks uh, that add just a little bit more character to uh, the shot. Lighting. Um, we know that lighting toward the end of the day tends to be a little warmer lighting and uh, light in the mid, uh, middle of the day or late morning can be a little cold sometimes. Um, that is something we can affect in this, in this process. We can adjust the contrast for, for drama, uh, either more contrast or less contrast if we want something that's kind of light and airy. Um, and so overall, we create this, this look um, uh, of, of, you know, what does this, what are we trying to interpret? What are we trying to show people with this uh, picture? Now, as far as, as how they work, uh, on the iPhone, you'll see that in the bottom, you'll have a series of buttons down here. And if you take your finger and just swipe sideways, it will move each one of these buttons into the primary uh, location. And then if you take your finger on this little scale underneath and slide it back and forth, you'll see that it uh, adds or subtracts that particular adjustment to the picture above, okay? And you know, if you have it in front of you, give it a try. It's, you know, each one of these has its own little feature, its own little thing that it's doing to affect the color. 
Um, on the iPhone, we, there are 11 different adjustments you can make to color, three different adjustments you can make to detail that add sharpness or, or contrast just in detail. And then we have the vignette tool, which is, um, if you're familiar with older photographs, old uh, film photographs, um, you may recall or you may be aware of the effect where you have like darker corners on the on the picture and this is this was a natural thing with a lot of older lenses uh, that didn't transmit light quite as well on the edges and so you got this it 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 actually made you sort of focus on the lighter part of the picture which was the center so uh, vignetting used to be very popular in portraits um, and you can still use it very effectively for to sort of focus people's attention on thing, things. I have uh, one picture coming up that I'll show you uh, that I used it on and I really like the effect. So that's the iPhone. Now on the Mac, we have a larger scale we can work with. So it, it lets you do more things. We have this adjustment bar is now on the side and it's broken down into these groups. We now have 14 color adjustments. We have five detail adjustments. We still have the vignette, but we also get a retouching tool and it's really a pretty great retouching tool. Uh, you can go in and remove um, a lot of stuff. You can remove people, you can you know, do all the things that, uh, that you see on some of the, some of the ads uh, for, for dedicated retouching tools. Um, but it's really nice because if you just have that one distracting thing that you feel is, is wrecking your photo, it gives you the opportunity to take that out right here while you're working on it. Uh, Photos also has this selective color tool, which is pretty neat. If you have a color that is, is kind of unique in the, in the picture, if you have somebody wearing a bright colored shirt or you have have um, a house, so, you know, something that's a, a good distinct color, you can actually select that and alter that color slightly with this tool uh, to, to change it uh, you know, to what you uh, want. So that's neat. Uh, there is a red eye uh, button uh, as well that will help eliminate red eye. And then there's a black and white section and me being a real fan of black and white photography. Um, I love this tool. Um, this deserves its own, uh, its own live training at some point, and I, I, I plan to do that. Uh, but you can go in and play with it and see for yourself um, how it gives you some controls that most black and white filters don't. So it's a lot of fun. I highly rec recommend it. Now, the other thing that is available on the Mac that um, is not available on the iPhone is the adjustment groups. Um, this is a little more sophisticated, but it's very cool because what happens is um, they've not only taken the, the normal, uh, the normal uh, adjustments like exposure and adjusting highlights and shadows and so forth. Uh, but they've linked them together in these groups. So we have a light group, which basically affects, the, it has all the tools in it that deal with exposure. And then it has a color group, which has saturation, contrast, and, and color cast. Um, and these are all grouped together. What happens is that rather than going in and individually adjusting these, you can actually take this overall group slider and move in a general direction. So you can say, uh, you know, this, this picture is a little too dark. I'd like to brighten it up slightly and drag that slider to the right. And as you do that, it calculates what needs to happen with each of these individual subsettings, for lack of a better word. Uh, and a good example of that here is this highlight slider. So, so as, th as the picture in this case has been uh, moved lighter and lighter, it's actually darkened the highlights. Because if you 
if you brighten the whole picture, what happens is the detail that's in the highlights gets too bright. You lose all the detail. And so the intelligence that they've built into this correction says, you know what, let's, let's keep that detail in the highlights, even though the overall look of the picture is getting brighter. Um, this is pretty sophisticated um, adjustment. And it just, it helps you start to understand how these all work. It's a great teaching tool because you can start out with something and say, I basically think I want it to do this. Um, but then you can see inside that general correction what the detail stuff is. I really love this. And it really is, uh, as far as I know, it's fairly unique to, uh, to Apple. Uh, and until you get into some pretty sophisticated uh, software. Uh, you also see at the top here, we have um, uh, a reset button. There, so you can, you can work just on this lightness. You can play with individual uh, settings here. You can always return. You can reset these back to zero if you don't like what you've done. You can literally just check and uncheck this button to, to see it with and without that adjustment. So you have a nice learning tool there. Um, and it has an auto button, which I'm going to go into separately. Um, but each one of these groups that they've created has those features. So it just, it makes it a really, really great learning tool. And as a, as a reminder, um, if you find you're, you've gone down a road you don't like, you've, you've overdone something, or you've done, maybe you've made a correction for, you're going to print something on Canvas that needs a little different look than how you normally like it, um, you can go up to the revert button, which is in the upper left-hand corner on the Mac and lower right-hand corner on, on the iPhone. And you can literally just reset that photo back to the original look and uh, start over again. Now, the, um, the auto adjustment deserves a special mention here because for me, the auto adjustment is a great learning tool. And the reason is this. Apple, I mean, I'm, I'm a card-carrying fanboy of Apple, and I, I won't make apologies about that. But the reason is that a lot of the stuff they do is really clever, and I like that. And um, so we are lucky that the iPhones get better and better all the time. The camera gets better and better all the time. And for the most part, the photos are really good photos. And this is a great place to, to make the point. Not every photo needs an edit. A lot of photos that, that I take, I'm totally happy with right out of the camera. So that said, what's great about the auto adjustment is when you have a picture that you think could be improved a little bit, but you're not sure why, what you can do is hit the auto adjust, which is this little magic wand uh, button up in the in the uh, toolbar, and there is a magic wand button uh, that's the first button in adjustments on the iPhone as well. Does the same thing, but on the Mac, what's great about it is you hit that auto adjust, and it it makes a change that the Apple color experts have said this is this is a pleasing look that most people would like, and you can see what the change is, but even better is you can see what Apple did in order to get that. So from a learning perspective, this is great. You can, you know, you're, you're uh, setting it to a, a standard, you know, for better or for worse, uh, but you're setting it to a standard and you can see what the software did in order to get to that point. So, so, this is a fun thing to play with um, to, to see, you know, how you, how you stack up versus what a, what a, a standard might be. Um, I find about half the time I like it better than my own settings and about half the time I don't. So you don't have to stick with it, but it's, it's a great way to learn how color works and how this whole adjustment works.
So that's the, uh, that's the auto thing. So we've now gone through cropping, how we, how we frame our pictures, literally. Uh, we've talked about the colors and, and the, the look and feel of the, uh, of the photos and ways that you can get to these adjustments. Now we're gonna talk about filters briefly. Uh, filters are really just kind of shortcuts. Uh, a, a filter is a collection of these settings that um, provide a certain effect. Uh, the ones that are, I'm gonna show you here that come with the uh, photo software uh, are, basic, are pretty basic color and contrast corrections, uh, but you can go out to third party applications and find things that are, you know, they mimic distressed film, they mimic, you know, faded film or, or any number of things that you can imagine. So um, this is the, oh, let me go back a sec. I just want to show here in the, um, we get to this as you might expect by going to the filters tab, which is uh, in the center on the iPhone and is also the center on the Mac up at the top. So hitting that gets you this, this palette here. And uh, at the bottom, as you, if you touch and slide these filters across, you'll get the different looks. It will show you what the, uh, what the look is. And when you find one you like, you can hit the done button here. On the, uh, on the Mac, it's a similar thing. Uh, again, here, here you, you have room that we have some, some little views. And these are, these are the ones that come with the iPhone. So we have, you can always go back to original, of course. And uh, we, it, this helps you understand when photographers talk about a warm look or a cool look uh, or dramatic. Uh, this, is, this is a good uh, way to sort of understand what those conversations are like. Uh, down here, we also have uh, black and white and, and you, um, you know, black and white is a filter. Um, and it's, it's I, I think, a really great one. I'm very fond of black and white. So, so this, this should help you understand what these different looks are. And you may find one that is, becomes your sort of signature look that you like. And uh, you can use it on your photos. Um, I do want to say, um, just because you use a filter doesn't mean you have to stop there. Uh, these are, you can consider these starting points. So you could go into Vivid Warm here and you could go back to the adjustment tab and uh, darken it slightly to give it a, a more dramatic look. Uh, so it becomes more like dramatic warm, but maybe with a little different spin to it. Maybe you adjust the color slightly as well. So just look at, look at filters as shortcuts and kind of to get you close to what you're looking for you can always add on adjustments on top of that. So we've been through this whole thing about uh, the adjustments, the editing, how it works. I want to just spend a few minutes here and sort of finish out by showing you some examples of things that I've done that will show you the types of thinking I went through in order to come up with what I did. So here's a, this is a picture that I took um, at a, uh, a fishing harbor in California. And I like this shot because it's, it was very reminiscent of, of me growing up around fishing boats um, when I was a boy. Uh, I don't see these big fishing fleets that much anymore. And so this was, this was kind of cool. And I, I've seen so many fishermen sitting, cleaning their, their catches. It just intrigued me. Now the same kind of thing as with the, the boy that I showed you earlier at the beach, I really didn't want to get so close that I would disturb these people. And um, so I took this shot, this is sort of as close as I could get, and uh, uh, I took this shot, but I really wanted something a little more dramatic. I, I'm, there's a lot going on here and I wanted to, to, to focus in a little bit on, on the fishermen themselves. So 
this is a combination of the things that we've been talking about. I cropped in on it. I went, uh, went a little bit more widescreen, a little more 16 by nine. I added some contrast. I bled the, the colors out a little bit. There really isn't quite as much color going on here. Um, and certainly not as soft and subtle as it is here. And um, then I added this vignette uh, around the edges here. So the corners are a little darker. And to me, um, I, I really like this shot. It's, uh, uh, it, it focuses on the fisherman. It has a kind of a gritty look, which is, is my remembrance of, of fishing fleets and, and so forth. And it, they become kind of more shapes. I can imagine this picture as like a big picture uh, on my wall. That, that has just these little hints of color, but, um, but is almost a black and white. So that's, that's one way that you can go with that. Here's another one. Um, this is, I photographed this in, in one of my favorite spots. Uh, it's a, a local beach that um, when the tide goes out, you can just walk for, it seems like miles, <coughs> excuse me. What I really like are clouds. When I have clouds and a, and a view like this, um, it, you know, it, it really strikes a chord and I love to do black and white with clouds. So this is a case where, again, I cropped it wide because I think it, it serves this, it, it makes it look bigger to me. And um, I threw in some contrast, uh, adjusted the black and white to, to really bring out the clouds and almost make this more of a graphic kind of thing. And when you look at this, you know, this is another shot that I, I would, you know, really love to see big on, on somebody's wall. Um, you just have these people, you, you start to see these people as little, these little spots of, of white here. Um, I think it works really great. Now, as it happens, this is another good reason to crop things. Um, I, when I cropped this short, it cropped out my shadow uh, as I was taking the shot. So this is another good reason to crop. I'm pretty sure I would have cropped it this way anyhow, because this is, you know, the clouds and this, this long view are, are kind of what draws me to this picture. I really don't need the beach in front. Um, and I probably could have cloned out. I could have retouched myself out of this. But in this case, it works anyway. It also crops out this that I don't want. And I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it does look, here's a, here's a larger view of that same picture. And I think as, you know, this is one of the things that you think about when you're doing this editing is what, how big is it gonna be? Where is it gonna be shown? Is it gonna be something that is, uh, on a on a screen is it something that people are going to be looking at on a on a you know six inch iPhone or are they going to be looking at it on the wall and I hope someday I can do this on a wall because I think it would be pretty neat here's another one uh, that actually is is <laughs> in the same place at a different time um, I saw this picture uh, on the left there's basically a, a beach party going way out on these flats. People are walking out to, to join the party. And there was something about it that almost felt like those old um, postcards you used to see from the Southwest of, of uh, you know, they were kind of faded. The colors weren't quite right. Uh, maybe almost hand painted kind of look. And it just, it, it, it interested me enough to, to try and recreate that kind of look. So here again, we're sort of creating a different reality, you know, going back in time kind of, kind of thing. Here's a case um, that uh, we, our family was, uh, was playing this board game and it was kind of interesting seeing the really bright colors and the punchy colors and, and all these artifacts, you know, this is, this is again kind of a time tripping thing where you know, going back to the times when board games were like every night and stuff. And I thought it would be really fun to take this, this picture of us doing this 
so I stood up and I held the camera overhead and got this overhead shot. But you, you kind of lose things. You're not, um, you know, the, if, if you look carefully, you can see what's going on. But it's not a, it's not a really strong shot by itself. I thought if I punched up the color and, and honestly exaggerated it quite a bit, that it would start to show all these other things going on. So now you see the boxes over here and you see the, 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 the glasses and the dishes and the people, frankly, um, much better. And now it becomes kind of, a, kind of an interesting scenario. Um, and it, it actually got a lot of comment on, uh, on Facebook. So um, I think it was a, a success for that. Here's one that, you know, we run into all the time where <laughs> we're trying to take pictures in the dark, basically. Um, this was with one of our, our good friends um, out west. And it was, we were sitting around having dessert after dinner uh, out, outside. There just really was not much light. And I decided if I could just brighten up um, the these the faces uh, just enough so that you could see what was going on. You can now you can see the, the his face. You can see the edge of the wine glass. Um, you can see uh, my wife's uh, reflection, kind of, or the the highlights in her face from the light. And now it becomes a real picture. I mean, this is this is something. It was it was a, a point in time. It was was a great experience. And this, with a little bit of adjustment, this picture went from, um, you know, being okay to something that I really mark as one of my favorites. Last one I'm gonna show you is, um, is another uh, water scene, another reason to play around with editing. This, is, um, this was taken almost at sunset one night when I was walking and there really was not much color. I have to say this was, this uh, picture on the left was fairly true, I think, to, to what was going on. Um, but I, I just felt that this color in the grass, I just hadn't seen like fall colors in seagrass before. It really kind of struck me. So I thought, you know, I, I am not someone to push color uh, unnecessarily, but this, this I thought deserved it. So I really pushed it far enough to almost make it a, a an abstract kind of look. And um, I really like it. It just, again, it's one of those shots that, um, you know, it just seemed more dramatic, more interesting. And again, the, the kind of photo that, that you play with and, and can make something out of uh, as adjustments. So that's it. That's what we've been through today. Welcome back. Uh, this, is, this is getting really close to the end of the tour here. So let's go over what, what uh, we went through. Um, I just uh, I wanna say again, editing is how we make our pictures our own. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's, it's a wonderful creative outlet. It's something that every one of us has with us. We can play around with it. Um, it, it shows our point of view, how we see things, how we want to see things. And um, I just, I think it's a, a wonderful creative tool. I also feel that, that the Apple Photos uh, universe um, makes it that much easier because uh, the tools are consistent across the devices and it's non-destructive. You, you really cannot get into trouble um, unless you literally delete photos and they make it kind of hard to do that as well. So um, it's a great place to learn photography if you want to learn more. And uh, it's frankly just a great platform just to do photography in for the long term. We went through the three main uh, tools, the cropping tools, the adjustment tools, and we talked about filters and how those work. And we talked a little bit about the similar similarities and differences between the iPhone and the Mac 
and how they how do you deal with adjustments in each one. So I want to leave everybody with with some thoughts. You know, if you want to take this to the next step, um, here's some things you can do that that I think would would help you get into editing a little bit more. <clears throat> First of all, I would, I would find 10 or 15 photos or take 10 or 15 photos that you would like to edit and just play with them. Try some different things um, and, and see, see how they uh, work out for you. Um, these are like typical groups, I think, you know, portraits, we're all we all take portraits. Um, if you have portrait mode, you can play with that as well. That's a whole different conversation. Uh, landscapes, obviously is one of my favorites. Buildings and architecture are really interesting. You know, anytime I'm in New York and you go by these these cool little buildings that are sandwiched between skyscrapers and stuff, it, there's there's a lot to be seen there. Street photography is a lot of fun and it's become a huge, it's become its own thing. Uh, you know, everything used to be street photography, then it wasn't, and now street photography is a thing again. Um, still life and architectural details are always fun as well. One thing you can do is uh, make duplicates um, and of the photos. So even, even though you can go back and change uh, any photo, go back to square one, do it again, what's kind of fun sometimes is to take a photo, duplicate it, uh, which we mentioned in the beginning, and you can make your changes to the to the duplicate and see the two side by side, which is is sometimes the most useful in terms of learning. You can then practice using your adjustments and effects. Um, again, use auto adjust uh, to help teach you what what the quote standard uh, is, at least in in Apple's view, and how they got there. And then you can make your own adjustments accordingly. And finally, I would say um, the uh, find some Instagram photographers. There's a lot of really good photography on Instagram. And if you find a few that you like, um, street photography in particular, I think has some really rich stuff and lifestyle photography. Um, you can you can get start to get a feel of of what you like and what. You, you sort of get a feel after a while for what people are doing to get the uh, to adjust them and to get the kind of edits that they display. I will leave you with the invitation to go to Facebook and join my Mystery to Mastery with Apple Photos group. Um, yeah, we're we're I'm spending more time there. I my whole intention is to. Have, make this kind of conversation or like editing um, more of a dynamic thing and be in there uh, talking with people about stuff they could do and answering questions. So um, take a look at that. Mystery to Mastery with Apple Photos is the, uh, that we'll, we'll find it for you. Uh, my website and company is Blue Otter Imaging. We do a lot of other things, but you know, I love doing this kind of talk. And you can email me, uh, learn at bluewaterimaging.com. So I want to thank everybody for, for coming. Uh, we have a few minutes here if anybody has questions. And um, that's really all I have. Any, uh, any comments out there? Any, did, did everybody learn something new out of this? Just go ahead and... and Pop it in the chat if you did. Um, okay. Kirsten says, yes, I <laughs> learned something new. Yes, yes, auto adjust. Um, yeah, auto adjust is is cool and and it, at least it it starts you down the road. Um, great. Uh, looks like looks like uh, people enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, um, you know, again, please feel free to email or, or jump onto Facebook. Uh, good. The SKU tool. Thank you. I know. I knew somebody would love the SKU tool. <laughs> it's really great at parties. Nobody knows it's there. Um, all right.
Well, I'm going to thank everybody for showing up. Um, there's going to be more of these. So uh, please, oh, let's see. I just ordered canvases 10 by 15. I should have sized them in photos first. Two by three. Um, well, you don't have to. I, I will say one thing about the about the commercial online print industry right now is that you know they recognize not everybody is going to pre-size things when it comes to them. So usually they have tools available or they they give you some guidance as to what you're going to get um, when you get that that finished piece back. Um, you can certainly ask about that, but um, for, for me, that sizing and cropping thing is really helpful just so that I can visualize what I'm getting. Uh, and I, I know that some something that, that I love and nobody else would necessarily recognize isn't gonna get cropped out when it, when it gets put together. So, um, you know, I'm sure you'll be fine, but, you know, if you can do it ahead of time, it just gives you a little bit of, uh, you know, gives you some control. And you may decide after you do it that you want to do a slightly different size just for composition reasons. I don't know. But um, anyway, that's a good question. Uh, did two photos, oh, two photos overlap easier? Let's see. Did two photos, oh, la on laptop was easier, phone was harder, but love the dramatic cool. <laughs> yeah, dramatic cool is great. Um, and yes, you know, th this is the thing. It, the, the phone is amazing. I mean, this, this used to be our dark room, you know. We used to go into these literally dark rooms to like do what we do now on the phone and in a few minutes. Um, but it is smaller. I mean, that is, that is one of the advantages of, of working with uh, photos on the Mac is that you have a larger, uh, you, you can see the pictures better, you, you have more controls. Um, so, uh, you know, it's really your choice. Or, you know, the other thing you can do be, because of how the Apple system works is you can start making an edit on your phone and then when you get back to your computer, you can pick up, pick up where you left off and continue on. So it's, it's really easy to move back and forth. Um, okay, uh, to easier, ah, so long, Kirsten. Um, all right, well, thank you. I think that, that looks like um, yeah, we're done for the day. There's gonna be more of these, you know, um, I, I will put it out there. And um, we're going to send uh, information about where you can see the replay. And also, we'd love to get people's feedback about uh, things that you really loved and what you would like to see in the future. So take care, and thanks again for coming. <laughs>